<laughs> well, I have to put on an extra pair of socks every now and then, but uh, it's all right. Well, I'm a little sunshiny down here and about uh, 60 degrees, so everything's fine. Taking care of a little business south of Jackson, but uh, glad to be with you this morning. And uh, we got all kinds of little things to talk about. And uh, just tell me when you're ready to jump in there. I'm ready when you are, sir. Just let's give everybody the phone numbers and the text numbers. Remind them phone lines are available to you at 731-891-6161 or the Victory Honda text line at 731-410-7560. That'll put you right in here with John and be more than happy to uh, attack whatever problem you may have. It's all yours, sir. What you, where, are we, where are we headed this morning? Well, we're gonna to head to the to the uh, commercial bathroom this morning. Okay. And uh, the, the things I like to talk about sometimes uh, are, are real life experiences, and I've had two this week that makes me kind of wonder uh, what in the world we're gonna do here. Right. And uh, I know there's a lot of there's a there's a lot of uh, residences out there that are buying these devices. And uh, I haven't had an awful lot of experience with them other than changing the batteries. And here's what I'm, I'm talking about. All right. You know, we're, we're living in this uh, time now where everybody's germ conscious and COVID conscious. And, and in other words, as I, as I say, we don't want to get nobody else's cooties. Exactly. So, <laughs> we, they, so they've come up with these touchless faucets now right right i I, I like the idea of that i haven't tried yeah i haven't tried one yet are 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 they are they uh they got the bugs out of them are they fairly functional or well apparently where i was they didn't have the bugs out of them not only did they not have the bugs I don't think they were thinking straight. <laughs> uh, I, here, here's what happened. Now, it was a relatively common brand named after a big city uh, up in Illinois. I'll just put it that way. Okay. And uh, there was a whole shopping center with these devices in it. Hmm. So... I get a call from New Jersey, which is one of these companies that service uh, multiple companies. And uh, they said, John, you need to go out and see what's wrong with these faucets. It says we need to change the batteries out in them. Now, most people don't realize that these touchless faucets have batteries. Yeah. And most most of the brands that we are accustomed to in Tennessee, you'll put a little double A battery in there and have to change it out ever so often. And it's a relatively easy thing to do. You just pop a little clip, take the old battery out, and you put the new battery in. Everything's just lovely. Except in this particular brand of faucet. Now, there were 12 faucets that I was dealing with in six stores. One in the men's room and one in the ladies' room. And nobody could use the sink in anybody's bathroom because the faucets wouldn't come on. You'd go to touch them. And people were not realizing they wasn't working. They were walking them. They were looking for handles. They were <laughs> looking for things to turn and couldn't get any water to come out of the faucet. So being told what the situation was, I took me some batteries with me. So I get up there, and I get under the sink and uh, went to looking to see, well, how do you get this battery out? And ended up having to take half the faucet apart, which is one problem. They shouldn't be that difficult on anybody's brand of faucet. 
But then I found something, and I just sat on the floor and looked at it, and I said, I'm just not believing this. And what the deal was, they had a rechargeable battery pack on this faucet. Hmm. Trouble is, they were built into the wiring, and nobody had any chargers to go on them. (laughs) So you could not recharge the battery without having a specially made battery pack. So in other words, if you took it out, you still couldn't get the faucet to work until you had a new battery pack which happened to be four months backward. (laughs) Couldn't get them at all. Oh, man. There was not even a place to plug in a a cord to recharge it. And even if you had a cord to recharge it, there wasn't a place to plug it in. And the charge pack is made on the faucet itself. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out what dummy designed this faucet. <laughs> but uh, but they are still without water in their lavatory in this town. It's not it's not in Jackson, but it's close. And uh, I'm just stopping to think now. I've never seen one like this. But uh, here we are, a place that has been open, brand new place. This little strip center has been open for eight months. Right. And uh, six of those months, they had a working faucet, and now they've been without for two months. And uh, it looks like it's going to be another two, three weeks before they get some more. I I actually (laughs) told them they just need to change the faucets out because... An average person couldn't change these battery packs out. They are really strange. That is that is so, nuts. What what I'm what I'm bringing this up for is we're getting more and more technology driven, and touchless faucets. The idea of them are very good, and and I like them, but they get a little aggravating sometimes because you may want to use them uh, more than. They want to squirt out, in other words. Yeah. And you're constantly having to wave your hand and doing all this stuff, you know. Now, I have to admit, the manufacturer that we have in Jackson, Tennessee, Delta, mm-hmm. has a very good faucet that is touchless. And and we uh, kind of used to put those in, and, and they're easy to deal with. But some of these off-brands, uh, they're kind of strange. So yeah. just wanted to kind of bring that up in case people... Uh, was out there looking, make sure that if you're going to get one of those faucets, get one that the batteries will interchange. And if they have a rechargeable cell, make sure you have a way to recharge it and a place to plug it in. Otherwise, when you take it out, you're not going to be able to use your faucet. That is that is really strange. Now, I, I have seen on some TV commercials a touchless faucet, and I'm assuming by the way the the, uh, the commercial is, is shown that it interfaces with your Alexa system. You're familiar with those things where you tell, you say, hey, Alexa, and, and, and it turns on whatever you want to turn on or whatever the case may be. But this guy is, uh, is cooking, and he needs a cup of water, and he tells the faucet to give me a cup of water, and it squirts out exactly one cup of water. Have you seen those? I don't want to even look at that. That just <laughs> makes my num- stomach draw up just thinking about it. <laughs> Me too. Me too. You know, just a good a good rule of thumb. If there. I get to the point that I'm so lazy that I can't get myself a cup of water <laughs> and use a measuring cup, I just need to go to the house. <laughs> hey, that's what it's coming to. You remember back a long time ago a song uh, by, by by a duo called Zager and Evans called In the, In the Year 2525? It talked oh, about yeah. it talked about things like that, you know, uh, about all the the technology and all the strange strange things that we were going to be dealing with. I have not seen one of those in action. I do I have, do have a couple of friends here in town who, uh, when they remodeled the kitchen, put in the uh, touchless faucet, and they they like it. They like it a lot. 
I guess they hadn't had to recharge it yet. Well, they, you know, they they uh, they work out pretty good. But you know, I was uh, ran into another little situation, and while we're kind of on this technology uh, deal here, right? Um, as you know, I was in Houston last weekend. Exactly. And uh, and while I was visiting a relative there, their kitchen light went out and i'm thinking okay i'll fix this not a problem and uh, i do this all the time so i go and i open it up and i find that this fluorescent light fixture has a bad ballast in it Hmm. and it's got in the in the uh the fixtures uses what we call the fat bulbs the right. T12 big fluorescent bulbs. It was an old fixture. It was original to the house. So I decided to go to the local big box store down there and go to get a, uh, a ballast. Now, I've kind of noticed trends over the years. They kind of start out west, and then they start moving to the east. Yeah, that may be a problem. Hit us in Jackson. Yep. And, and other people might have been dealing with that stuff six months ago. But here I am in this big box store, and once I found somebody that knew what a ballast was, and that was an older person, uh, I said, I need a ballast for a T12 bulb, and it's a two-bulb fixture. And they looked at me kind of funny, and I said, a ballast, you know, goes in the fluorescent light fixture. So they take me over to the light fixture place, and then we got to looking. Now, this store in Jackson, Tennessee, has all this stuff. Pays all this out. But I could not buy a ballast for a fluorescent light fixture. You're kidding. Now, I knew what I was going to need, and I was going to take one with me in my bag on the airplane. Right. But I figured I would never make it through security with a ballast <laughs> in my suitcase because they would think that was some kind of a horrible thing and yep. I'd be questioned. It would get hysterical if I had to go through all that. But anyway, they'd have had to, ended up having to buy. They'd have, they'd have had to bomb dogs <laughs> after you. <laughs> I would. I'd be having a cavity search for it over with. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be just, it'd be horrible. <laughs> oh, but ooh, anyway, yes. So I was just going to buy one down in Texas, and you know they didn't have one. Right. So uh, ended up having to buy a whole new light fixture. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing because I had to buy an LED carry fluorescent anymore in it's, this big box store. It's hard. harmful to the environment <laughs> oh yeah right okay <laughs> oh lord so, so we get we get through checkout with this thing and and we go and put it in and it just it just bothered me i don't know why but that we're not keeping parts for older fixtures in the home because people you know are always repairing things Although it seems like we are going more and more towards a disposable society, but I don't like that because I got you got to have parts for stuff. I mean, didn't they used to like when they changed cars? You had to keep the parts for them for ten years or something like that. Yeah, I think I think something something like that. Yeah, but you know, you get you get back to these older older cars now. It it, it uh, except for the specialty shops that carry those things for restoration people and hot rodders and stuff like that some of those old parts on those 50s and 60s cars can be very very hard to find well you know but 50s and 60s that's that's 50 60 year, years ago i know i was I there i just <laughs> want a ballast for my life fixture and, and they were pretty popular a couple of years ago yeah that's well yeah but, I, I, uh, I understand why why were it why, it, it hmm. seems that do what? No, I, I was going to uh, go ahead. Finish your finish your thought. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> I was fixing to go. 
I was fixing to go start ranting and raving about something else. Okay. Well, hang on, um, hang on to that rant and rave. Let me let me let me run this by you. Uh, first of all, remind everybody that the text line is open seven three one four one zero seven five six zero. Call in is uh, direct to John seven three one eight nine one six one six one, and you're listening to Tricks of the Trade on this Saturday morning here on ninety three point one. John, I'm gonna take about a, a ninety second uh, commercial break. And then I've got a another techie uh, thing that I have come in contact with over the last few days. I want to ask you if you've had any experience with it. So hang on. John Allen is here. It is Tricks of the Trade on a Saturday. Eight nineteen on a Saturday morning. This is Tricks of the Trade with John Allen on 93.1-731-891-6161. The call-in number, that'll put you right in the board, and John will be glad to answer your questions one-on-one. -on -one, or if you would like to text, that's a good way to do it also, 731-410-7560. John, you with me back there? I'm right here. There we go. Okay. We have a little technical thing here at the at the station again, but I don't think it's affecting what uh, what we're what we're doing. Uh, anyway, let's see here. Oh, I was going to ask you. Uh, uh, you're talking about rechargeable batteries in the in the faucets and and things like that. I've been I've been doing some research with a little help, uh, with a lot of help actually. But uh, on I'm thinking about putting in some security cameras uh, at at the house just uh, just to have them there. And uh, one of the pieces that I have looked at is is a is an integrated uh, floodlight and and uh, and and camera motion act activated camera, but the thing is uh, is operated on a rechargeable battery. Now, if I put this where my other floodlight is now, that means it's going to be about ten feet in the air. And you know, at my uh, at my age, I don't want to be climbing up and down a ladder to rechate or to uh, replace a uh, uh, a rechargeable battery that's 10 feet in the air two or three times a month, you know, whatever it takes. Have you seen any of that at all? Actually, my my son has had uh, some experience with that, and he tells me about it. Right. Apparently those batteries, which just, you know, you, you put them in the device and just stick it on the wall, there's no wires. Exactly. Apparently yeah, those it. batteries last. 
you know, quite a long time and uh, maybe three or four months. But uh, I don't really know. And if he's listening, maybe he'll call in. But uh, I don't know the process for uh, taking those down if they're up high. But, I mean, I guess the thing that would, would strike me, Jim, is just don't, don't put them up so high that you can't easily get to them. Um, and as far as putting them around floodlights, rather than having to worry about lights, I would I would get uh, uh, the cameras with the night vision uh, that see in the dark. And I've seen these, and it's amazing to me how clear uh, the picture is. And you can you can see things and it just be dark as a tomb outside yeah oh yeah so, absolutely uh, i don't i don't know exactly where you're going to be putting yours but you might just want to when you mount them put them in an accessible area right or like uh, and i'll say this cuz i know your house like like if you're going to watch the driveway you might could stick it right outside the window of your office upstairs, and that way you could grab it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. And, uh, not have to get a ladder involved. Yeah, you know where where I was thinking, but what what I was trying to do is kill two birds with one stone, and sometimes that's not not all that that easy. Uh, uh, but I was going to replace the the existing floodlight, which is is damaged, and and do a two for one up there with a the camera flood floodlight thing, which puts it about. 10 feet in in the air on the front of the front of the house so i may i may get to where i just don't you know i'm gonna have to give up that idea and do what you're talking about doing now i also, want to just consider keeping those things separate because i don't know that i'd try to tie the floodlight in with a camera right i would just get a uh, camera with night vision on it and uh and uh and, and I'm sure there's other people that might have had some experience with these, and they, uh, but they're becoming more and more popular to where ever everybody not only can see who's outside or when things come up, but they have it on their cell phone. It's kind of like these doorbells they got out now, where you can be across the country and see who's ringing your ding dong out there. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I've, I've looked at those too, but. Uh, you know, it just it, it with the configuration of the front of my house, it just it wouldn't it wouldn't do what I needed to do. I've got a got a text we need to we need to take a look at, and you're listening to John Allen with Tricks right. of the Trade on this Saturday morning. It says, John, help! I got a problem. Someone who shall remain nameless opened the door a little bit too quickly, and the doorknob knocked a hole in my sheetrock wall. How do I fix that? Well, you may not want to try to fix it. They actually make little uh, discs that are just a little bigger than your doorknob that you can buy at most any hardware store. Uh, in Jackson, I know they got them at Lowe's and Home Depot. Probably have them at Ace Hardware. Yep. But it's a little disc about four or five inches round, and it just sticks on the wall. And it does two things. Number one, it covers up that boo-boo, but number two, it, it provides a bumper uh, for that doorknob to hit later on. Now, if you don't want that and you you want to just fix the hole and put it back the way it was, it's going to get a little involved, but you can do it. You're literally going to have to cut out your sheetrock a little bit to where you can work a little board in behind the wall and put a screw through the sheetrock to hold it in place and then you're going to cut a piece of sheetrock and put it in the hole and screw it to the board and then you'll finish it just like you would any patch in the sheetrock okay and once you get through finishing it and, and uh, mudding it and sanding it all down, then you'll have to paint probably the entire wall. So that process is pretty time-consuming and labor-intensive. 
So if it were my home, I would go out and get the little disc that just stick to the wall. They sell it here. Right. And you can get them in a couple of different colors, kind of a beige and a white. And uh, I've seen a couple of, of black ones. And uh, just put them up there with whatever thinks will be a companion color to uh, what's on your wall. And you can solve the problem in literally 10 seconds hmm. instead of having to wait several days between drying times to right. to do the sheetrock deal. Well, Texter, that was a, a, a lot easier fix than I thought it was going to be. And I, I, didn't, I didn't know those, those little th- – I've seen the little pad that you can put on the wall, you know, to keep the, if you got a lock on that, on that doorknob to keep it from making an indentation on it, but, uh, it's, it's not, it's not nearly as big as the doorknob. So that's interesting. I, I hadn't heard about that. Yeah. You can put those on and it's, uh, it's, it's a similar device that like you put on the ceiling to cover up where you had a light fixture, but these are made for the walls. They're plastic. Right. They got adhesive on the back of them. You just peel the face off of it, stick it where you want it, and you're done. Hey, that's 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 easy enough. That's easy enough. If not, just call me and I'll give you John's phone number. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh me, let's take. I'll hey, take, I got a, Yep. Go ahead. I I need to uh, tell folks that are going out nowadays and buying light bulbs yes oh yes help uh, us had a, had a customer this week that went out and bought six led light bulbs to replace her little incandescent bulbs that she had in her light fixtures in the house she just thought well i'm gonna go out i'm gonna i'm just gonna head and buy the bulbs i'm gonna convert things over and uh, don't have to deal with the heat of the bulbs uh, and I'll have plenty of light and, you know, doing all the right things. Right. And when, when she got home, she put the bulbs in the fixtures and everything was fine until she turned on the light. Hmm. And it was like a 60s psychedelic party. <laughs> everything started strobing and flashing and flickering. And uh, she thought she had really done something wrong. And uh, called me up and told me what all she had done. And we got a little laugh out of it. And I said, well, you got one little problem that you didn't take into consideration. And here's what your problem is. And uh, found out that her light fixtures, they all had dimmers on. Hmm. And if you've got a LED bulb, you've got to have an LED dimmer. Right. And these bulbs that she bought were not dimmable bulbs. Uh, if you got a dimmer controlling the lights in your room, you've got to have a dimmable LED bulb. Just a regular old cheap LED bulb won't work. Huh. So if you're going out and, and converting to LED, you need to make sure you deal with uh, the circuits that have dimmers on them and make sure that the light bulbs you put in are dimmable and that you have an LED dimmer to deal with those uh, fixtures. Uh, most of the dimmers now are compatible. They, they've uh, got the kinks out of them and uh, they will work on incandescent or they'll work on some on fluorescent and as well as LED. But the bulbs have got to be dimmable, or you've just wasted your money. Was that is that the is that the case? If you're still using incandescent bulbs, you didn't have to have a special bulb to dim an incandescent, right? Right, right. You okay. can dim those all you want to because you got a filament, and and you can drop your voltage and all down on the filament, and it works fine. But LED, they don't have filaments. True. They got what's called diodes. Yep, them little wigglers. And when the electricity hits a diode, it just wiggles. <laughs> so if you and if that you wiggling, put, yeah. puts off light. Yeah, and no heat, or minimal no heat. heat anyway. Yeah, 
Yeah, you know, I, I told you not too long ago, my, my wife uh, it likes to do jigsaw puzzles, and we, we set her up a little operating area in the, in the sunroom over at the house, and I bought her a clamp-on gooseneck light so she could move it around and, you know, not cast shadows. And uh, it's an LED, and it's got, uh, it's, got three, it's got three power levels, you know, of brightness, and it's also got three uh, hues on it, too, simply by touching the, uh, the case. You can get it uh, from bright, bright, bright to, uh, to a yellow color to even a warmer color, which is just still just amazes me. Yeah, I, you know, that, uh, that that just kind of messes with my head a little bit, too, <laughs> where you touch these things and you, you dim your lights, and it's kind of like the new cars now. You go out and you touch the handle, uh-huh. and it unlocks your car. Exactly. That, exactly. that kind of freaks me yeah, out. Yeah, it, it, know, it knows you're coming. <laughs> oh, that's man. right. That's, that's a scary thing, you know. Talking to John Allen on Tricks of the Trade on this Saturday morning. We're going to take about uh, two minutes and get a commercial break in here, hear from our sponsors, and uh, we'll be back with more. Stay with us here on 93.1. Saturday morning in Jackson in West Tennessee. It is a cool day where we are. A little bit of cloud out there now that's supposed to be moving out and things are going to warm up over the next few days. We got it hot and bothered and going on here on Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. And we're uh, we're doing it uh, remotely again this week. So if you hear a little lag between John's comments and, and mine, that's that's what it is. And uh, we'll uh, we'll deal with it and hope you will too. 731-410-7560 is the uh, text line, the Victory Honda text line. Give us a, a text or shoot us a, a message and uh, we'll be glad to answer your questions or call us directly at 731-891-6161. We go back down south to John. Well, we're going to get back to normal, whatever normal is, next week. So we'll have the cameras going in the studio, and we'll uh, have a lot of things kind of back to normal. And and hopefully this uh, election will be over with. And I (laughs) do want to remind everybody that to get out and vote. Yep. Exercise your right to gripe about whatever you want to. But if you don't vote, you can't gripe about nothing. This is true. Hey, while I've, get out while, there and let's kind of see. While we're on the subject of uh, of not uh, and being back on camera next week, John Rawl is here with me this morning, and we are on uh, Facebook Live on the Y'all uh, Facebook uh, page, and also on uh, 
uh, News Talk West Tennessee and News Talk Jackson, and it'll be on the Y'all YouTube channel a little bit later today. John, you are actually on the air this morning, and your smiling face is there by proxy. We got you propped up over oh, in the corner. So, you got the cardboard poster <laughs> over there? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. well, the baseball's over, and they didn't need them for the stadium, so we brought one home. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, man, well, man. That's, technology. That's a good thing. Hold on. Technology, man, I'm telling we'll you. Go. You know the bad the bad part is Hey, is anybody going trick or treat tonight? I don't know. Uh uh we're going we're not we're going to be shut down this year cuz we're not going to not going to be home to uh, this evening. So uh, don't don't come by our house because we didn't buy any candy. We knew we weren't going to be there. I think so. You know, there've been a lot of the uh, trick uh, trunk or treat things have uh, have been going on um, uh, recently. So uh, you know, I yeah, I'm, I'm assuming everybody's uh, everybody's going to get out and do their thing. It's going to be a good night for it. It's going to be cold. Well, I uh, I was prepared before I got called out of town. I was I was gonna dress up and uh, I was going to get some of mama's lipstick <laughs> and put red dots all over my face and body uh-huh. where people have been poking me with a six foot social distancing pole. <laughs> the old 10 foot pole has <laughs> gone away, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, we're only doing six foot poles right now. <laughs> Oh, oh hell wow. mercy! What's uh you you're down in, in Florida for for a meeting, and uh, I, let me let me pick on pick up on that in just a minute. We've got a text coming in this morning. Let me see what we got. Okay, you ready for this one? It says uh, you mentioned you, you mentioned dimmable LED bulbs. I have a dimmable switch on the wall. Can I just swap it out with a non dimmable switch? Is it uh, a simple swap? Yes. Yeah, if you're just putting a plain switch where a dimmer was, it'll be just fine. And uh, you can use any kind of bulb you want in your fixture, and you'll you'll be okay. Interesting. Obviously, you won't be able to dim at that point, but if that's, you know, if that's what you're looking for, that's good. Yep. Shannon, Shannon D., our texter this morning, thank you for that. We appreciate that. Thanks for listening to Tricks of the Trade with, uh, with John Allen this morning. Uh, what else can we get into today? What, what, uh, it, it's cold. Uh, like, uh, like we said, you're, you're down there in, in the warm climes. We're, uh, we're dealing with a little cold flash here. In fact, we're supposed to get down near freezing uh, uh, Sunday morning and uh, into Monday morning. So uh, anything, anything that uh, – we need to do at the last minute other than check those outdoor hoses, right? Well, that's true. You know, uh, it, I don't think we're going to get a hard freeze, but no. we will, and you will forget about it. And uh, so as I tell everybody this time of the year, unscrew your hoses, take them off so that those frost-proof faucets are not holding water, and they will freeze, and you won't know it. And the, the outer casing on those faucets will uh, burst. And then you won't know it until you turn that faucet back on and flood your house mm-hmm. inside. Right. And it's kind of a helpless feeling when you don't know where the water's coming from and you don't have anything running. But, <laughs> you know, uh, your buddy's outside washing his car on a warm day and he's flooding your house at the same time. Yeah. Not so, a good uh, thing. You've got to be careful about that. And, uh, and, and there's, there's other things I tell folks, uh, you know, close your vents, uh, clean out your gutters so that they're not holding water and cause they'll freeze and, and swell and get out, all out of sorts. Uh, check your outside lights. Now we're going to, the time change is going to be tonight and, uh, it's going to get dark an hour earlier. Right. Uh, tomorrow. And you're going to be coming home in the dark if you don't have your outside lights on. Now, I've got a <laughs> little funny story here where we got people that have the outside lights. So they go and and uh, they've got lights with sensors on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, motion sensors. Got one. And... 
if you if you use a motion sensor and it turns your light on, if you've got other sensors that are photo cells to where they automatically turn the lights on when it gets dark, it may make those go off. <laughs> so you got one going against the other. So it's a it's a silly little thing, but you'd be surprised how many calls we get over the winter with people saying my outside lights don't work anymore and they're supposed to be on all night long. Yeah. And then I go out there and find they got a motion sensor on and it's 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 going right towards that other fixture causing it to think the sun's come up. Huh. And it turns the light off. Right. Right, 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 right. Interesting. It's one of those things. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I can I can see where that uh, that would definitely be uh, be a problem. You know, because you, you you're right. You got two forces going against each other. Got another text on the uh, the Victory Honda text line this morning. It says John just bought a house from the 1940s. Needs to be completely replumbed. What do you think about plex piping? I like it. Um, it's good and, uh, it's easy. The only thing you're going to have that you may not have in your toolbox is depending upon the type fittings that you use to make your connections. Uh, sometimes people will use what's called a manifold and it's, it's a device you'll screw in a, in an area of your home and, your pipe will actually slide on the manifold and it will run continuously over to your plumbing fixture. In other words, there's just one main line coming in, goes to the manifold, and then it branches out and uh, to go to each fixture. Uh, I really like the flexible plumbing fixtures, uh, plumbing pipes. Uh, sometimes you have to have special tools to crimp the lines or you can use shark bite fittings. And, uh, but if you use the shark bite fittings, uh, it gets a little pricey. Those fittings are not cheap. You know, they're anywhere from 7 to $12 a piece, depending upon what type of fitting it is, whether it be like a cup leg or an elbow or a tee or something like that. But I think you'll like those, uh, that flexible plumbing it uh it's probably superior to what you have in that house being a 40s house it's probably got galvanized pipes in it and uh that is a, a kind of a well it just it's not good because you probably don't have any water flow it's corroded on the inside and i ran across one the other day jim that was even older than that and the plumbing pipes in this house were lead pipes. Whoa. And uh, they were huge, And uh, but they were lead. Now, you'd think, well, what in the world would people have lead water lines? Well, that's just kind of what they had back in the day. And back then, people didn't know better, and they thought it was safe. Hmm. And uh, you keep going back a little farther than that, I bet you didn't know it, but believe it or not, in downtown Jackson, Tennessee, way back in the day when they first came out with natural gas, right. we had wooden gas lines. You know, I heard that back a long they time did. ago, and that just blew my mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, wooden gas lines. And uh, it's just one of those things. But your techs are, uh, you know, they, they will like that the plumbing pipes that are, that are flexible and uh uh, some people call those PEX, P-E-X lines. Yeah. And then there's there's other brands out there, but uh, I, I like it. So, you know, head, head right on and, and do that project. All right. Jump in there, Texter. Appreciate the text. Appreciate you listening this morning to Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. John, I've got about 15 minutes before the 9 o'clock hour. I'm going to take our last uh Let's see, about a uh, 90-second commercial break right here, and uh, we'll be back with more of John Allen and Tricks of the Trade. Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
We're more than just printing. With XMC, the possibilities are endless. Let XMC, your Xerox authorized sales agent, help take your business to the next level. Whether you need electronic document management to update your office, a projector system for your boardroom, a high-tech flat panel welcome center in your lobby, or an upgrade to your existing office equipment, visit XMCINC.com and let XMC and Xerox handle your product installation from start to finish, as well as providing all technical support. With nine territories in the Southeast, XMC has you covered. Gary Sinise, best known as Lieutenant Dan in the movie Forrest Gump and an advocate for America's servicemen and women, will be the featured speaker for the 56th Benefit Dinner at Freed Hardeman University on December 4th. Students need your help now more than ever. Help provide scholarships by visiting FHU.edu. Gary Sinise at the FHU Benefit Dinner. Get your tickets and sponsorship today. Hi, I'm Rodney Dean. And I'm Geraldine. For a long time, we've been telling you about Dave's Automotive Service. But here's some things you may not know. Dave's is the oldest and most experienced shop in the county. He has great prices on oil changes. Dave also does tune-ups, brake repair, and engine repair. And he has the most updated diagnostic equipment for vehicle repair. Like when that service engine soon light comes on, he can check it out in a flash. So if your ride's on the blink and needs some TLC, don't grab a hammer. Just grab the phone and dial 696-4351 and set up an appointment today. Dave's Automotive, located on Highway 88 between Alamo and Murray City at the 412 intersection. Dave knows autos. Oh, by the way, I never found my hammer, did you? Uh, yeah, but I gave it away. Why? Well, if you keep working on things with it soon, we won't have anything left. You never let me do nothing. Mm, got the same problem around my house, John. It is uh, about 13 minutes away from the hour. we got about 13 minutes left in this segment on a Saturday morning. It is Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. And uh, the numbers are one more time, 731-891-6161. We'll direct call in to, the, uh, to John, or the uh, text line is 731-410-7560. And uh, we are back. John, what, uh, what else are we going to get into this morning? Well, I want to give everybody a little warning about one little thing. Uh, you know, we talked about a minute ago, things to get ready for winter, things to do around the house. There's one little thing I got to include on this that is becoming more and more problem, uh, more of a problem with folks in the spring. And that is, you know, we're about at the end of our season using our air conditioner. Right. And uh, you're going to be using your heat all the time. And many of you folks out there, your air conditioner is uh, what's called a split system. Mm -hmm. Now, you may have part of it in the attic. And then you've got a condenser that's outside on the ground. Well, the idea is that condenser circulates Freon uh, through your system, and, it, and it's located up in the attic, and it goes through a coil that the air blows through to give you cool air. Now, when that hot air and that cold air meet in that attic sometimes, it, it sweats, and that's why we have to have condensate drains on our units and our eggs. Right. And you'll also have one maybe if it's if it's in a closet somewhere. Hey, John. But if, the idea is that water's got to go. If you will, hold that thought. We've got a caller coming in. Let me put them in the uh, in the box here. There you go. Caller, you're on. Hey, what's going on, John? Good morning. Good morning. Hey, uh, I want to ask you about, uh, since it's starting to get cold, I've been in my house, this will be my second year in my house. I want to ask you your opinion on something. Uh, how necessary do you think it is to call out a chimney doctor before I fire my uh, my, my wood-burning stove up for the first time? Well, you say it's about two years old? Well, no, nah, it's just my second year in the house. How old is the house? Uh, about 30, 40 years old. Have you ever had a fire in it before? Uh, no. I don't even think uh, I don't even think the previous owners used it. I'm not sure if they did or not, but I don't think they did. You know, I think in that case, it might be a good idea to have someone come and inspect that chimney. 
and you say that it may not have even had a fire in it before, I would be, I would want to make sure that you can have a fire in it. Um, I would assume it's a masonry fireplace with a masonry chimney, but uh, right. you want to make sure that it's not a, a false fireplace. Uh, make sure that the inside liners of that are in good shape. Make sure that you open up your damper when you do that. Make sure you don't have uh, animals that have built nests, squirrels and birds and all down inside of it. Um, if you if you've never had a fire in it and the previous owner never have, it might not be a bad idea to just to get a safety check on it. And when you if they say it's okay, um, start with a small fire and kind of uh, gradually build it up. And look outside right. and make sure that the chimney is is the smoke's coming out of the top of it. You know, a mason, a good mason, is hard to find nowadays. And uh, you want to make sure that that chimney can draw. You know, some of these chimneys now, you got to you got to crack a door to allow enough air to come into the house for it to go up through the chimney. Otherwise, you'll smoke your house up. So start with a small fire. Make sure that that chimney will draw. Make sure the damper's open. And uh, use a little common sense on that, and I think you'll probably be all right. But I would get it checked out. All right. Thank you, man. All right. right. Thanks for calling this morning. Thank you, caller. That's how easy it is. 731-891-6161. And uh, it'll put you right in the board, and you can talk to John face-to-face, so to speak. It's about uh, we got about seven yeah. seven minutes or so, John, from uh, from the uh, from the ending bell today. So you were talking about uh, split unit air conditioners and condensation lines in the attic. Yep. Yeah. Uh, see, those lines carry condensate water out and discharge it outside. Well, that's kind of a normal thing. You don't think too much about it, but being in a real hot attic sometimes will sag a little bit and they will hold water in them. Hmm. Or if maybe you're not thinking and you're taking stuff up, up up in your attic and you're putting stuff away, you'll set one on top of a line and cause a little sag in that line and it holds water. Well, you still may not see where I'm going with this, but I'm going to tell you right now. You're in an attic and your attic most of the time is not heated. Right. So that in a hard freeze, that line up there will freeze and it will break and shatter that plastic line. And you won't know it until you start that air conditioner up next spring and then it starts raining in your house because we've had many cases where people take off during the day and the air conditioner comes on and they come home at night and they find their ceiling on the floor and everything <laughs> wet around it because yeah. water's been running in that air conditioner all day long. Right. And, uh, you know, when that happens, and if that were to happen to you to stop the water, you kind of feel helpless because, you don't, you can't turn your water off and stop it because this is condensate water. So the only thing you can do to stop the water from running is turn the air conditioner off. And that's what most people don't know to do. Right. Uh, they start looking for a water valve or something like that. So uh, just make sure that those lines are free. Uh, if you're not real sure, if you got a little air compressor or one of these little air pistols that the uh, HVAC mechanics use, blow those lines out for the winter. Make sure that they are not holding water so that you don't have that problem in the spring. Ooh, great, great tip. I, I appreciate that because that, yeah, that that can definitely be a problem when you see those uh, little brown stains beginning to form on the ceiling. Uh, we got about five minutes left. A uh, question on the on the tech the Victory Honda text line. It says, John, doing some fall planting between my porch and my outside HVAC unit. How much distance do I need to allow between that unit and the hit? 
hedge, the hedge that I'm putting in? Well, you want enough room there that you can work around it and and uh, to be able to keep the coils clean. You also want to have enough room for your HVAC mechanic to be able to get in there and work without having to cut your bushes. And you also want enough room with whatever you're planning. Know what you're planning and know how large it's going to get and how wide it's going to get. Right. General rule of thumb, I'd say about three feet away from the unit, and that way it'll breathe good. Um, you may want to go a little more if whatever you're planning will get wider. In other words, it'll fill out, not necessarily get tall, but it'll get big. Yeah. Uh, sometimes holly trees, holly bushes, um, some hedges, they they grow and they grow pretty rapidly and you you think you might be far enough away but next thing you know it's up next to your unit you never want one to be touching that unit you keep it trimmed back so just uh wherever you get your plants get them to tell you how big that 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 bush is going to get so you can plan accordingly but when it's mature keep at least Two to three feet away from the unit, and I think you'll be all right. All right, let me let me uh, thank you, Texter. Appreciate appreciate that question. Let me let me add a little to that same scenario. Instead of bushes, as you as you well know, we're about to do the, a similar thing at my house, and that is to put up a fence panel between the air units and and the water feature out there. Same same criteria there. Two to three feet. Yep, you need to have enough room that you can get all the way around that unit. Right, okay. If you need to service it or replace it or whatever you need to do. So, yeah, that's that's exactly what I'd do. All righty, John, we got two minutes left in uh, in the show today. Anything in, in wrapping up? Uh, a little situation I ran into earlier in the week, and, and – Homes will, will run into this from time and time with your plumbing system. If you start to see a discharge in your water heater, maybe a little water trickling out the uh, pop-off valve, uh-huh. play, pay close attention to that because something has malfunctioned, causing uh, the temperature to start rising in that tank and excessive pressure is building up causing that uh, relief valve to relieve that pressure so if you got like an electric water heater you may have a thermostat that's sticking one thing you don't want to do is if you see that pipe that open pipe dripping water don't plug it if you do you run the risk of your water heater blowing up and you have defeated the safety uh, situa- safety device that was put on that unit to begin with. So uh, just take care of the problem. If you don't know what you're doing, call your plumber and uh, keep it safe around the house there. All right. Uh, we just about just about used all the time that they've allotted for us this morning. You've been listening to Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. And uh, John, be, uh, be looking forward to being back in the studio with you next week here at the Dixie Cafe. In the meantime, you be safe, and we'll see you next week on Tricks of the Trade. All right. Well, we'll see you next Saturday morning at 8 o'clock, and we'll be in the studio then. Absolutely, man. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. John Allen, Tricks of the Trade. Don't forget you can see it uh, this afternoon on the Y'all, Y-A-L-L, no apostrophe, y'all.com, face, uh, uh, YouTube channel. And it's on the y'all.com Facebook page also. So uh, take a look. You can go back and uh, review what John had to offer for you this morning. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing you at this time next week live here from the Dixie Cafe.